going on, guys? Welcome back to this channel. We're over here giving you day two of San Diego Comic-Con at home. We're giving you that recap. We are your hosts, Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. And another jam-packed day full of panels, but we're going to give you some highlights that came out on day two, starting with that first panel of that Hulu television show based on the comics, Hellstrom. That's right. Now, we've been talking for a long time about Marvel and MCU moving into the horror genre, but something that's been totally overlooked is the first time that's going to happen is right on the Hulu streaming platform coming on October 16th with the debut of the brand new series, Hellstrom. And this series is going to be, of course, about Damien and Anna Hellstrom, and it's going to be taken straight from the comics, from the Son of Satan line. Um, it's going to be true to the comics, but set in the modern day. They debuted the trailer, and it looks amazing. Right. We also had another great panel from DC. We had some Jim Lee on there, but there's some great DC news coming out of there. That DC at home day one panel, right? That's right. Look, so the long panel, hour long, but there were a couple nuggets of information that I know comic buyers are going to be interested in. First, with the debut of a new creative team on Wonder Woman with 759, they talked about the creation of a new villain, Liar Liar, and all that went into the design of that character. Definitely something to pay attention to as everybody's looking for that next punchline. Um, also, Brian Michael Bendis talked about the big double-sized Superman 25, and he is bringing a new villain um, to the world of Superman, and this villain is going to be unlike any villain that, that Superman has encountered before. He is going to have a perspective that is unlike any Superman has seen and one he can't really relate to. Then getting further into it, we also had a multiple Walking Dead panels, but we also had that Robert Kirkman panel, right? That's right. They called it Robert Kirkman from home, and he did a Q and A with the audience to know what they what do they want to hear from Robert Kirkman. So we got a variety of skybound Robert Kirkman information. Um, one question was actually about Brian, one of your favorite properties, Outcast, and he said there would be no season three. Um, all of the actors' contracts have lapsed, but he threw this little teaser tidbit in at the end, saying he cannot say there will never be an Outcast movie. Yeah, uh, Outcast movie would be great. I love the television show. Viewers at home, let us know, did you watch that television show? We know there was a mix-up between season one, season two, and the continuity. It took forever to come out, but it did eventually come out. Still a great show. But in addition to Outcast, there was also some more information coming out of that panel, right? We talked about Invincible, and we also heard some news about Oblivion Song. Can you tell us about some of that? That's right. Oblivion Song is very active over at Universal. Kirkman is approving things day by day. And he said that things will heat up once they're able to get to casting news. He did mention they probably announced that option a little early, but it's still very, very active. And Invincible was kind of the talk of the day coming out of this Robert Kirkman at home panel as he announced new additions to the voice cast. And there were several, and I mean several, former Walking Dead cast uh, members added to this already impressive voice cast uh, and crew for the upcoming Invincible series on Amazon. So right before we talked about the Robert Kirkman panel, we talked about those other Walking Dead panels. We do know the main Walking Dead show season 10, that finale is coming in October, but they're also going to extend it by six episodes because they haven't been able to start production on season 11 yet. But there's also some news from Fear the Walking Dead and a new spinoff, right? That's right. So coming from Fear the Walking Dead, the spinoff series from the original Walking Dead, we got a trailer for the upcoming season, which is season six. Um, it ha definitely has fans hype, but also we have a brand new Walking Dead spinoff called Walking Dead, The World Beyond. And this is a really unique take on the Walking Dead universe. This is taking place 10 years after the outbreak starts um, in this like post-apocalyptic world, looking at the first generation of children growing up in this world from their point of view um, and sort of some of the challenges that they've got. The trailer debuted and a release date from October 4th has been set for AMC. So this is definitely one you're going to want to be paying attention to. And then another key panel we want to talk about yesterday during day one, we talked about that Ty McFarlane sci-fi documentary, but there was another panel today that concentrated on Ty McFarlane's toys and comics, right? That's right. And all things Todd McFarlane and Todd McFarlane Incorporated. Um, Todd talked about how um, similar to a lot of businesses um, that kind of are involved in the entertainment space, that while the pandemic has slowed things, it's also increased demand because a lot of people are at home. They want entertainment. Um, so he said he's been busier than ever during the pandemic. Retailers are uh, 
reaching out to him to increase shelf space for his McFarlane toys as the McFarlane toys brand, especially with that DC license is starting to see a um, resurgence. And so much so that Todd McFarlane toys is going to expand into the world of generic toy lines, meaning toy lines created specifically um, for a specific price point for a specific retailer. Um, and that is kind of a big extension for the McFarlane toy brand. Um, he also mentioned that uh, the TV side has been very hot. A lot of TV writers are not working. He has been hiring TV writers to write scripts and treatments for many of his properties, including properties inside and outside of the Spawn universe. And he said that there's a lot of big names that he has attached that we cannot talk about yet. And finally, the news that really everybody wants to talk about, and that's the Spawn movie. He said it's been hotter than ever. He said he really wishes he could share more information and he's planning on some upcoming announcements, but he said that things are weird in Hollywood right now and they're trying to keep everything under wraps. He said there is another casting announcement on top of the casting announcements he's already made that is a major, major announcement, but he cannot share it yet. Um, so he said be on the lookout for upcoming announcements coming from the Spawn movie, but fans are going to be excited. Yeah, so those are the main panels that we wanted to highlight on day two. We'll put links to in the description of this video for each panel that we discussed. Like I said, we're recapping. We're recapping that more comic-centric. There's over, what, 350 panels throughout this whole Comic-Con. But we also had some news today that came outside the con, right? DC, they have their big December event. They're going to go up against the King of Black with Marvel with their own epic event called Endless Winter, right? That's right. There's already speculation based on the DC Comics character by the same name, um, but we do not know and have no confirmation yet um, whether it's based on this character or this is just an event title, but Buzz is definitely circulating the comic community. And just like happens every year at San Diego or Comic Con time, there's a ton of news going around the various halls, but there's a bunch of news going around the dealer floor as people are talking about some of these announcements and new publication things that's going on in the market. And this is no different. And furthermore, we've got another one with a tweet going on on social media from Tom King, the writer of the upcoming Rorschach Black Label series. He publicly expressed his displeasure for the well-received Jay Lee cover B um, for the upcoming Rorschach number one. Jay Lee having done uh, comic art for the Comics Gate group um, who has kind of set their crosshairs on Tom King in the past. Um, he has expressed his displeasure for DC having done that and explained that during the process dc does not reach out to writers and the creative team to get their approval on variant covers so he had no say in it um, it'll be interesting to monitor as it's certainly getting a lot of press and could bring a lot of attention to the cover b and it'll be interesting to see what the secondary market has to say about this as if warshak wasn't getting enough attention already this is going to be a big series right definitely definitely a lot of eyes on this one anytime you do anything with Watchmen, it's going to get attention so there it is, guys. There's our day two recap, plus a little couple of bonus nuggets of information. Don't forget, we also have day one recap. We're going to put it up on the end screen right here, but you can also find it on Superman's Comics. And if you're enjoying this content, we do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. This is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we'll see you tomorrow night for day three of San Diego Comic-Con at Home Recap.